Well, good day to you all, dear ones, and welcome to this 23rd day of November. It is day 328 in our journey through the scriptures. Hello to everyone out there. My name's Hunter. I am your brother and your Bible reading coach. I'm somebody who shows up with you every day to spend some time together in the pages of the Bible. And we are going to do what we do and let the scriptures point the way to the one who is the living word of God, the one alone who has the words of life. It is for life that he has set us free, my friends, so let us live it in the joy, in the strength, in the patient endurance, in the co-suffering love that is ours in Jesus. Today, dear one, we are in the Gospel of Matthew, chapters 14 through 16. And that is it, and that is enough, and it is good. So, Father, open our hearts to your goodness now and help us to see. Matthew chapter 14. When Herod Antipas, the ruler of Galilee, heard about Jesus, he said to his advisors, This must be John the Baptist raised from the dead. That is why he can do such miracles. For Herod had arrested and imprisoned John as a favor to his wife Herodias, the former wife of Herod's brother Philip. John had been telling Herod, It is against God's law for you to marry her. Herod wanted to kill John, but he was afraid of a riot because all the people believed John was a prophet. But at a birthday party for Herod, Herodias' daughter performed a dance that greatly pleased him, so he promised with a vow to give her anything she wanted. At her mother's urging, the girl said, I want the head of John the Baptist on a tray. Then the king regretted what he had said, but because of the vow he had made in front of his guests, he issued the necessary orders, so John was beheaded in the prison, and his head was brought on a tray and given to the girl who took it to her mother. Later John's disciples came for his body and buried it, and they went and told Jesus what had happened. As soon as Jesus heard the news, He left in a boat to a remote area to be alone, but the crowds heard where he was headed and followed on foot from many towns. Jesus saw the huge crowd as he stepped from the boat, and he had compassion on them and healed their sick. That evening the disciples came to him and said, This is a remote place and it's already getting late. Send the crowds away so they can go to the village and buy food for themselves. But Jesus said, That isn't necessary. You feed them. We only have five loaves of bread and two fish, they answered. Bring them here, he said. Then he told the people to sit down on the grass. Jesus took the five loaves and two fish, looked up toward heaven, and blessed them. Then, breaking the loaves into pieces, he gave the bread to the disciples who distributed it to the people. They ate as much as they wanted, and afterward the disciples picked up twelve baskets of leftovers. About five thousand men were fed that day, in addition to all the women and children. Immediately after this, Jesus insisted that his disciples get back into the boat and cross to the other side of the lake, while he sent the people home. After sending them home, he went up into the hills by himself to pray. Night fell while he was there alone. Meanwhile, the disciples were in trouble far away from land, for a strong wind had risen, and they were fighting heavy waves. About three o'clock in the morning, Jesus came toward them, Walking on the water. When the disciples saw him walking on the water, they were terrified. In their fear, they cried out, It's a ghost! But Jesus spoke to them at once. Don't be afraid, he said. Take courage, I'm here. Then Peter called out to him, Lord, if it's really you, tell me to come to you. Walking on the water. Yes, come, Jesus said. So Peter went over the side of the boat and walked on the water towards Jesus. But when he saw the strong wind and waves, he was terrified and began to sink. Save me, Lord, he shouted. Jesus immediately reached out and grabbed him. You have so little faith, Jesus said. Why did you doubt me? When they climbed back into the boat, the wind stopped. Then the disciples worshipped him. You really are the Son of God, they exclaimed. After they had crossed the lake, they landed at Gennesaret. 
When the people recognized Jesus, the news of his arrival spread quickly throughout the whole area, and soon people were bringing all their sick to be healed. They begged him to let the sick touch at least the fringe of his robe, and all who touched him were healed. Matthew 15 Some Pharisees and teachers of religious law now arrived from Jerusalem to see Jesus. They asked him, Why do your disciples disobey our age-old tradition? For they ignore our tradition of ceremonial hand-washing before they eat. Jesus replied, And why do you, by your traditions, violate the direct commandments of God? For instance, God says, Honor your father and mother. And anyone who speaks disrespectfully of father or mother must be put to death. But you say it's all right for people to say to their parents, Sorry, I can't help you, for I have vowed to give to God what I would have given to you. In this way you say they don't need to honor their parents. And so you cancel the word of God for the sake of your own tradition. You hypocrites! Isaiah was right when he prophesied about you, for he wrote, These people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. Their worship is a farce, for they teach man-made ideas as commands from God. Then Jesus called to the crowd to come and hear. Listen, he said, and try to understand. It's not what goes into your mouth that defiles you. You are defiled by the words that come out of your mouth. Then the disciples came to him and asked, Do you realize you offended the Pharisees by what you just said? Jesus replied, Every plant not planted by my heavenly Father will be uprooted, so ignore them. They are blind guides leading the blind, and if one blind person guides another, they will both fall into a ditch. Then Peter asked Jesus, Explain to us the parable that says people aren't defiled by what they eat. Don't you understand yet? Jesus asked. Anything you eat passes through the stomach and then goes into the sewer. But the words you speak come from the heart. That's what defiles you. For from the heart come evil thoughts, murder, adultery, all sexual immorality, theft, lying, and slander. These are what defile you. Eating with unwashed hands will never defile you. Then Jesus left Galilee and went north to the region of Tyre and Sidon. A Gentile woman who lived there came to him pleading, Have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David, for my daughter is possessed by a demon that torments her severely. But Jesus gave her no reply, not even a word. Then his disciples urged him to send her away. Tell her to go away, they said. She's bothering us with all her begging. Then Jesus said to the woman, I was sent only to help God's lost sheep, the people of Israel. But she came and worshipped him, pleading again, Lord, help me. Jesus responded, It isn't right to take food from the children and throw it to the dogs. She replied, That's true, Lord. But even dogs are allowed to eat the scraps that fall beneath their master's table. Dear woman, Jesus said to her, Your faith is great. Your request is granted. And her daughter was instantly healed. Jesus returned to the Sea of Galilee and climbed a hill and sat down. A vast crowd brought to him people who were lame, blind, crippled, those who couldn't speak, and many others. They laid them before Jesus, and he healed them all. The crowd was amazed. Those who hadn't been able to speak were talking. The crippled were made well. The lame were walking, and the blind could see again, and they praised the God of Israel. Then Jesus called his disciples and told them, I feel sorry for these people. They have been here with me for three days and they have nothing left to eat. I don't want to send them away hungry, or they'll faint along the way. The disciples replied, Where would we get enough food here in the wilderness for such a huge crowd? Jesus asked, How much bread do you have? They replied, Seven loaves and a few small fish. So Jesus told all the people to sit down on the ground. Then he took the seven loaves and the fish, thanked God for them, and broke them into pieces. He gave them to the disciples who distributed the food to the crowd. They all ate as much as they wanted. Afterward, the disciples picked up seven large baskets of leftover food. There were 4,000 men who were fed that day, in addition to all the women and children. Then Jesus sent the people home, 
and he got into a boat and crossed over to the region of Magadan. Matthew 16 One day the Pharisees and Sadducees came to test Jesus, demanding that he show them a miraculous sign from heaven to prove his authority. He replied, You know the saying, red sky at night means fair weather tomorrow, red sky in the morning means foul weather all day? You know how to interpret the weather signs in the sky, but you don't know how to interpret the signs of the times. Only an evil, adulterous generation would demand a miraculous sign. But the only sign I'll give them is the sign of the prophet Jonah. Then Jesus left them and went away. Later, after they had crossed to the other side of the lake, the disciples discovered they had forgotten to bring any bread. Watch out, Jesus warned them. Beware of the yeast of the Pharisees and Sadducees. At this, they began to argue with each other because they hadn't brought any bread. Jesus knew what they were saying. So he said, You have so little faith. Why are you arguing with each other about having no bread? Don't you understand even yet? Don't you remember the five thousand I fed with five loaves and the baskets of leftovers you picked up? Or the four thousand I fed with seven loaves and the large baskets of leftovers you picked up? Why can't you understand that I'm not talking about bread? So again I say, Beware of the yeast of the Pharisees and Sadducees. Then at last they understood that he wasn't speaking about the yeast in bread, but about the deceptive teaching of the Pharisees and Sadducees. When Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do people say that the Son of Man is? Well, they replied, Some say John the Baptist, some say Elijah, and others say Jeremiah or one of the other prophets. Then he asked them, But who do you say I am? Simon Peter answered, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Jesus replied, You are blessed, Simon, son of John, because my Father in heaven has revealed this to you. You did not learn this from any human being. Now I say that you are Peter, which means rock, and upon this rock I will build my church, and all the powers of hell will not conquer it, and I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you forbid on earth will be forbidden in heaven, and whatever you permit on earth will be permitted in heaven. Then he sternly warned the disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah. From then on, Jesus began to tell his disciples plainly that it was necessary for him to go to Jerusalem, and that he would suffer many terrible things at the hands of the elders, the leading priests, and the teachers of religious law. He would be killed, but on the third day he would be raised from the dead. But Peter took him aside and began to reprimand him for saying such things. Heaven forbid, Lord, he said. This will never happen to you. Jesus turned to Peter and said, Get away from me, Satan. You are a dangerous trap to me. You are seeing things merely from a human point of view, not from God's. Then Jesus said to his disciples, If any of you wants to be my follower, you must give up your own way. Take up your cross and follow me. If you try to hang on to your life, you will lose it. But if you give up your life for my sake, you will save it. And what do you benefit if you gain the whole world but lose your own soul? Is anything worth more than your soul? For the Son of Man will come with his angels in the glory of the Father and will judge all people according to their deeds. And I tell you the truth, some standing right here now will not die before they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. And now may the Son of Man who is coming, but also whose kingdom is now, may he now give his blessing to the reading of his word. Amen. Full hearts, I'm thankful for the one who is the bread of life, who comes to us with such compassion, feeding and sustaining us, by his word and his indwelling presence. Jesus got out of the boat, looked over the crowd, and had compassion on them, because they were like sheep without a shepherd, because they were like sheep without a shepherd. And that compassion extended beyond his concern that they be fed with bread. He wanted for them not just to have full stomachs, but full and overflowing hearts. He takes what little we have, multiplies it, 
and makes it possible for all of us not just to have enough, but more than enough. And I am grateful. That's our Lord and King and his compassion for you and me. He's the God that comes to sustain us by his word every day, that we might be awakened to the abundance of his loving heart. That's where he desires us to live, and that is where I want to be. So let us continue to be nourished and sustained by our compassionate Lord. That's the prayer that I have for my own soul. That's the prayer that I have for my family, for my wife and my daughters and my son. And that's the prayer that I have for you. May it be so. Let's continue now in a time of prayer. Feel free to read along with these prayers in the show notes of today's podcast and meditate on these words that are being spoken over you, your family, and our world. And now, let us pray. Lord God, Almighty and Everlasting Father, you have brought us in safety to this new day. Preserve us with your mighty power that we might not fall into sin or be overcome by adversity. And in all we do, direct us to the fulfilling of your purpose through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O God, you have made of one blood all the peoples of the earth and sent your blessed Son to preach peace to those who are far and those who are near. Grant that people everywhere may seek after you and find you Bring the nations into your fold, pour out your spirit on all flesh, and hasten the coming of your kingdom. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now, Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light, and where there is sadness, joy. O Lord, grant that I might not seek so much to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in the giving that we receive, in the pardoning that we are pardoned. It is in the dying that we are born unto eternal life. Amen. And now as our Lord has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Well, my friends, it is a good day here in the household of Hunter and Heather, Because for the first time in a number of years, we've got all our girls here under our roof. Abigail from Scotland, Eden from New York City, and Magdalene from right here in Portland. All of us together. And that is so good. (laughs) I can't tell you how good it is. But I am so grateful. And I'm grateful for you too. I'm grateful that we can gather from our various homes to listen each day that my friend is so good and it's good in ways that none of us fully comprehend for god is at work and present in each of our lives sometimes it's hard to see sometimes it's impossible to see sometimes we've got to hold on to the impossibility of it all but as we do he makes himself known And our eyes are opened, and we keep taking another step in the direction of the one who is love itself, 
that, my friend, <laughs> is a good thing. And I'm grateful. I'm grateful that I have what I have right now in this moment with the girls here. I'm grateful that I have what I have even when I don't see all that there is. But we hold on, don't we? We do. By God's grace, we hold on and we keep walking and we keep breathing. And sometimes there's real joy. Well, I'm glad I get to share that with you, this journey of life together. What do you say we keep doing it? That's my plan. Lord willing and the creek don't rise, your brother Hunter plans on being here with you until that time. Let's go forward in God's joy. Let's let his joy be our strength. And let us always remember this. That you are loved. No doubt about it. Alrighty. I'll talk to you again tomorrow. You guys take care.